Hey, what's up everybody? It's J-Rock right here. Today we're going to be doing a, a bit of a hybrid. We're kind of do like a X-Force review, but also kind of like a read-along. Because I'm going to be showing some panels and I'll read a few things off of the word bubbles or panels. But it'll also be like a review because I'm not going to read through the whole book itself. So it's going to be a little bit of both. Now, if you like comic-related content, uh, you might want to hit that subscribe button. Because uh, that way it will update you on future content that I upload. Which will be comic reviews, comic chats, and so forth. Maybe some comic book hauls. Now we're going to be covering, as I said, we're going to be covering um, X-Force Epic Collection Volume 1. What better place to start than the beginning, right? Now this is a little bit confusing when it comes to super superhero comics. Especially with the big two. Because it's X-Force Volume 1, you think it's the beginning which it sort of is, it's a good jumping on point, but it's not necessarily the beginning. This was originally called New Mutants, right? And then they they changed to, towards the last episodes, we got introduced to this new character named Cable. And this was a, a team of kids that had powers and they went to the X-Men school to learn how to use their powers and control them and so forth. So it was basically stories about kids that happened to have superpowers. Now, once Cable shows up, he starts training these kids and turns them kind of into a military group and they change the title name from new mutants to x-force so on issue 100 it changes to x-force so i know it can be confusing i know so but but you could start here this is their first official uh mission as x-force so now they're a military team that kind of fights terrorism and stuff like that okay now this material was previously collected in uh two hardcovers Oh, one hardcover, the first one being called X-Force, A Force to be Reckoned With. That collected X-Force issues 1 through 4, and like the last few issues of New Mutants that led into the X-Force. And the second hardcover was called X-Force um, Under the Gun. That collected issues of X-Force 5 through 15. So now this epic collection collects issues 1 through 15 of X-Force, but it doesn't collect those last few New Mutant issues. Now this one also collects Wolverine issue number 54. I guess it's some type of tie-in. We'll find out once we get there. And Spider-Man issue 16. So we will have to read some Wolverine leading up to issue 54 to see how it crosses with this story, right? We'll get that at a later video. We'll knock that out the way. So now hopefully you got all that and I didn't confuse you. Now here, on the bottom right corner, you see in the narration, it says, Once there were children delighting in a dream. It says, And then on the bottom left corner, it says, Now they are soldiers fighting for the freedom of their own kind. The writer gives you a, an, through the narrating, he immediately gives you a feel for what this story is going to be about, where the series is going. So they start off here, they're in the Antarctic. They're in the snow, they're landing on the plane, much like the X-Men have their Blackbird. Now here you see Shatterstar say, as are we, we have waited long enough for this opportunity. Cable says, I know, today the terrorist actions of the Mutant Liberation Front come to an end. So Mutant Liberation Front is the MLF. And here Cable's right off the bat, he's letting you know that's their enemy, that's who they're going after. And the title here says, A Force to be Reckoned With. Next page, you get introduced to all the cast members on the X-Force team. It is a nice two-page spread here by Rob Liefeld. A lot of action, a lot of things going on. But everyone is in a position where you can see every character very clear. Now here, the first character on, uh, is Warpath. Second character, Cannonball. Then here you get Domino. Next character, obviously, Cable. And then you have your name right next to the character. It's a nice introduction. Here's the full page. Now let's check out the three characters on the bottom. Here you get Pharaoh. She's confused with Wolfsbane, which I initially got confused too because the New Mutants team had a character named Wolfsbane who looks very similar, just was missing the white streaks. So I don't know why they took that character out and replaced it with another character that's basically the same thing. 
So anyways, this is Feral. Next character, the female on the left is Boom Boom. And on the right, you get Shatterstar. So there you go again, the, the full page spread right there. We immediately get introduced to every character. We know who everybody is. I believe Pharaoh was replaced with Wolfsbane because things they do with her in the future of the story, of the series, they do things that they didn't want to change on Wolfsbane too much, so they just brought a new character that's basically the same, but her story will be different. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments if, if you have read this before and you know the history behind that decision. Please educate me and uh, let me know on the, on the bottom. That will help me going forward. In the battle with the uh, MLF, Mutant Liberation Front. Now, Cable points out that their leader is Strife. He says it does us no good fighting all these amateurs. Who we need is the main guy to get rid of the, the head honcho. So, uh, as he's saying this, Strife is looking at this battle that's going down through a monitor. And he decides to join the action. He's like, all right, Cable, you want me? And he says um, he's willing to, to confront him. So he shows up. This panel right here looks badass. As soon as Cable sees him, you see things about to go down. And Cable looks at him. He's like, that's Strife. He was it out pretty loud. You can see on the font, it's pretty big letters. And he immediately just starts shooting at him. So um, Strife takes off. And then we get a little hint at who the big bad is in this story. So you know who's going to be, who are they going to be going after, basically. And it's like a little teaser of the future showdown that's probably to come towards the end of the story, right? But at this point, both of these characters are fairly new, Cable and Strife. So he's um being proceeded as kind of like Cable's main nemesis at this time. It's going to be like his main villain, I guess. His arch, his, uh, it's going to be like his arch nemesis. Now, in the next panel, you see here Domino and Boom Boom, they're just posted there. And zoom in right here on Boom Boom's feet. Look at her feet in comparison to the rest of her body. Those feet are very small. The way she's positioned, her legs are very awkward. It, uh, physics, right? Physics, like, with gravity and so forth, it wouldn't make sense. You wouldn't be able to stand like that. And her feet also, anatomy, her feet would not be that size. So Rob Liefeld's reputation proceeds itself at this point. It's a big uh, hole in his game as the artist. Here we get introduced to another new character named Gideon. He's the guy in the ponytail right here. And uh, the other character next to him is Sunspot. He's one of the original New Mutant members. So here it seems he has taken another path. He's not with the New Mutants who are now X-Force. Seems he's not with them, he's in another, he's with this guy, who's his new mentor, and he's talking about, I know your old mentor was Xavier, and we disagree in a lot of uh, our way of thinking are a lot different, but we do have some things in common. One thing I like about this series so far, it's introducing a lot of new characters. But even the writing feels like it's a newer writer at this time, because the dialogue is a little raw, it's very, a lot of cliche, Things they're saying and the characters so far are kind of one note, but so the writer it's himself seems kind of newer at, at this time and point. And also the, the character sense they're new. I like when you get new characters because you're developing them for the first time. You can do a lot of things with them because their actions and their personality is not set in stone yet. So you get a lot of lead way of, of what you want to do with them. Here we get introduced to the character of GW Bridge, meaning uh, G for George. I tell him, hey, Sergeant, and he says, call me George. I don't like labels. This was a very popular thing in the 90s. I remember back then, it was all about being different and being unique and um, just not being labeled. You were just like, don't label me. You call me by my name. And that's crazy because nowadays, we're, in, we're living in a society today where this is kind of um, outdated because now it's a complete opposite. Everybody wants to be labeled. You know, I'm cisgender, um, I'm LGBTQ, like whatever your thing. And everybody wants to be labeled something. Like they want to be a part of a group. And back then, everybody wanted to be an individual. So it's crazy how, you know, things change with the time. Going further along in the store, we got, uh, in, in the story, and we got Cable working on the jet. You know, it's much like a mechanic. He's a very, you know, he's a man's man, works with his hands. 
and uh, he's talking to some of the other teammates. I believe this cannonball here. And he says, we had strife. We had him right where we wanted him. Why did you let him get away? He said, it's okay. We crippled their organization. Uh, they should be easy to take out next time. But back in the future, he had this uh, a younger teammate, much like how the new mutants are all younger than Cable. Cable's a, you know, a war vet. These guys are still young guys in their late teens, early 20s. So he's telling us a little bit about the story here. He goes, he was kind of like a son to me, but he wasn't my flesh and blood. Basically, right? His new protégés. And he might be a little overprotective of them. Like, he goes all out. Cable's clearly the type of guy that takes risk. He goes all out for war. But he's holding back because it's not just about him right now. He's carrying younger people with him. And he doesn't want the same thing to happen because he's, uh, he learned from his mistakes. You know what I mean? Like, this has happened to him before and he lost a loved one, basically. And I think uh, we're getting to know a little bit more about this character as we go. Originally, when they made this character, he was clearly a play on Arnold Schwarzenegger on Terminator. Uh, he's a half cyborg, comes from the from the future to the past to kill somebody. I, it will somehow make the future better before this guy does whatever it is he's gonna do, which has hasn't been revealed yet. Okay, here's another fly in um some life pills art. As you can see right here, this is the uh, Pharaoh's shoulders, shoulder blades, this is her back. And look at it, this is her back, this is her waist. And then look at the, the legs. This is the right leg, the left leg. This is her front, and this is the waist, and this is her back. If it was drawn correctly, this would be her right leg. That would have been her left leg. Her body is completely broken and twisted in a way it should not be. One of Rob Liefeld's big flaws. He was still kind of young at the time, still learning. But over the years, he never quite improved much. He didn't improve much. Even though his, uh, his art is very dynamic and exciting, the anatomy, it's very terrible. Now, I know in comics, it's kind of cool when they have it exaggerated. It doesn't have to be realistic. But it has to be somewhat accurate. And this, you know, it just doesn't work for me. It just looks terrible right here. Now here we have another panel where it's more accurate. See, it's the same pose here with the kick and the leg. But here the torso is just like half turned. It's not completely turned where it's her back and where the shoulder's way over here. See, here is more accurate of how the other panel should have been like. Now on issue two, we're introduced to another character named Kane. And um, he's here to stop Deadpool. This is Kane's first appearance and it's Deadpool's second appearance. His first appearance being on New Mutants issue 98. So he's here and he's paid by some man named Tolliver. I believe at this time we don't know who Tolliver is. But Deadpool, he's a, basically a gun for hire, right? He was hired by this guy Tolliver to assassinate Cable. And then um, they all seem to know each other. They know who Cable is, they know who Deadpool is. Brigade's like, we gotta stop Cable, I gotta talk to Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. And this guy Kane is like, oh, Cable's back. He's always disappearing and coming back. So it's to establish that they all have met each other before, they all mess up. The fight itself is just there to, so that you could bring up this dialogue and point out that they have a history with each other already. So after that, we flip back to with, with X-Force and Cable. They're training and so forth. And Pharrell, being the wolf's being wannabe, she slashes Cannonball pretty viciously. He ends up in the hospital. And here they're saying, man, like, you know, she has some, some bad in her. Like, she's not all good. We don't know much about her. They, she just showed up on the team. Didn't even explain how, right? She's just there. So that's a one issue I have so far. We're already two issues in. They haven't even explained how she got there or anything. And then Cable says, well, she's half animal, uh, half human. So it's her primal instinct, you know, it's in her nature. So here they're pointing out like, uh, when is it just in her nature and when it's too much? When it's so it looks like they're setting her up to be that character here. She's going to be like the Wolverine of the team. But you also got Shatterstar, who's a warrior from another dimension which we're gonna which all three issues is basically three issues of pure fighting 
which in one issue is cool, but by the second issue is like, man, they're still fighting, they're still fighting. Right? If you're a fan of art, you uh, there's some um, few artists here, and they're all completely different, and um, they're fun to watch. Story wise, it, it didn't bring much to the table, like I said, but it is important to read and to get through this if you plan on reading X Force. Just it establishes a lot of new players, a lot of new characters, and what's their backstory. You kind of hint at a lot of that, but it never really tells you much. So you read the second half of this book, I imagine it will tell you um, so why are the pieces moving, basically. But all in all, it was a fast read. I had fun reading it. It went through pretty quick. I had fun watching the art. Uh, part of it is nostalgia, but part of it was it is a pretty quick read. It, 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 I didn't feel like I was struggling through it or anything, although I hate to check this out. Uh, other than that, I uh, hope you stay tuned for the second part to this maybe in a week or so. okay guys it's been fun and i'll check you guys out later